Did that on purpose. Really? Who? Well, Robert. Those pisses were off, apparently. Um, okay, um, the tour package we have tonight, Cassandra Complex and Slow Dive, is um, not. Well, it doesn't fit together really. I mean, no. how, how does it come into being, this combination? Um, um, well, I mean, the tour actually happened. Um, it was very much a last minute kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, basically, <coughs> we just wanted to put together like a very short tour in Europe before the end of the year. And, um, Cassandra Complex kind of, you know, were up for us to do that for our tour. I mean, the, the thing is, I mean, it's good for us to do it, even if maybe the audiences that come to see them aren't going to be particularly into us. Um, because, I mean, it just gives us a bit of a, a profile. At least we've been out here now. And we're coming back in February, so... Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I mean, we've, we've actually enjoyed the tour. Um, you know, we've gone down pretty well, so... I mean, yeah. How about the uh, reaction of the audience so far? It's yeah, been it's good. been good. I mean, there's, good, yeah. there's actually been very, people down, very encouraging. down up, you know, just to see us, yeah. um, which is good. I mean, and, and you know, we, we don't seem to offend too many Cassandra Complex fans <laughs> either, so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like the music of Cassandra Complex? Do you like music like this? Um, I like... I like the music. I, I, don't, I don't like the vocal style very much. Um, but like, I quite like that kind of techno thing. Um, it's not, you know, I don't. I wouldn't listen to it an awful lot unless we were doing the tour. Which, but I mean, it's, yeah. it's not the one you'd buy in. I don't think it's awful by any means. It's, yeah. yeah. Well, what kind of music do you like then? Um, well, personally, I, I mean, I'm into loads of music, David Bowie, um, Birds, Pink Floyd, Rolling Stones, um, I listen to classical music, um, Jesus and Mary Chain, My Buddy Valentine, Cop Toast. Right, Lush, Mary, um, Step Proud. <laughs> you. Um, the Cure. <laughs> the Cure, yeah. Some other big band. Um, pretty similar to Neil, really. The exception of Susie and the Banshees, um, Crimes, very good. But yeah, and, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know really what else. I don't. I don't actually listen to a lot of music generally. Yeah. Um, unless we're on tour and you know, like you've done a taping stereo in the van yeah. when you're driving somewhere. I mean, at home I don't, I tend not to listen to mm. music a great deal. I just get sick of music all the time. just need a break from it. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we go to a fair amount of gigs of um, varying bands, a lot of them being the same people. <laughs> um, yeah. um, I don't think there's, there's not a lot in the contemporary scene that in England it's very exciting mm. not for me personally mm. but um, I, I think the Cranes are the most exciting band in England but probably at the minute I think mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, talking about creation records mate, what is it like being on this label? Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, no, they're a really good label. I mean, they've they've actually got quite a high pro high profile in England now. Yeah. Um, I mean, they've always had credibility as um, mm. an independent label. I mean, they've always had that since they, you know, they started with the Juice and Mary Chain and stuff. Um, and, and now they've they've kind of reached the point in England where they're actually making a mark and sort of like. The more commercial areas of the chart, which are, they're actually playing against major companies and doing better than them now. So, um, you know, in, in that respect, they're a really good label to be on. And also, artistically, they're probably one of the best labels you could be on because, I mean, we've always had like complete freedom when it comes to recording stuff, yeah. um, which I mean, you, you do need really. Uh,
and also McGee is is McGee. He's mad. I mean, he's like <laughs> he really is what creation is all about, and a lot of respects. And it's good to have someone like that involved in in a record company. Is there um, uh, a certain image of creation? Or do you think creation has a certain image? I think it has kind oh, of... Ask in a different way, I mean, why is creation so successful at the moment? At the minute? At the moment. At the moment. Well, I mean, it's, it's just, totally it's the bands, well. you know, Prime of Scream and Ride. Um, who else? Teenage Fan Club. Me bloody band team. My bloody Valentine. I mean, um, they've got a knack of signing the bands that. Uh, I mean, they sign the bands that they think are good, and and I think Alan's just got um, good enough taste, and he's sort of able to recognise what bands would actually be able to sell records. I mean, that's not the reason I don't think he signs bands for that, but I think it it seems to me quite curious that that he managed to pick up Ride and then they, they suddenly became huge. I mean, that, that's pretty good sort of timing, really. Um, and I think that's, that's just um, what makes it kind of different, really. Um, yes, yeah, Slow Life seemed to be um, in a very um, melancholic uh, tradition of, of, of music. Well, comparable to My Bloody Valentine and stuff, and all these bands that combine, you know, sort of noise and beauty. And why do you do it? What do you think? Yeah. I. You, write it? <laughs> you, write you know, it? I mean, we start, when we started the band two years ago. I mean, it was basically formed because we'd been we wanted to form a band because we liked the Juice and Mary Chain and we liked it's My Bloody Valentine. Band. And you know we like the Cure and we like Susan and the but the kind of the biggest influence on on all of us, I think, because of the generation we are and the age we are, was um, the Juice and Mary Chain. Because like I think we were all probably 15 or 16 when Psycho Candy came out, and it, I think at that age you kind of you're you're more influenced by music than any other kind of yeah. age. And so, I mean, that's that's why we, we we go for that, the kind of the blissed out approach to music, I suppose, because of that influence. But I mean, um, I think actually over the past year, the sound has actually changed um, quite a lot. I mean, it's kind of at the point now where it's it's sounding a lot more like like slow dive rather than just the kind of a band influenced by the Cocteaus and my bloody friends. I mean, that's always been the aim. And it, I mean, although those were our biggest influences, I mean, we'd, they've kind of diminished now. I mean, th I mean, I've always listened to lots of music, and that's, I mean, we all have. And um, you know, there's obviously other influences involved in that. I mean, the Cure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you agree to the fact that? Slow dive's music is a sort of combination of uh, noise and beauty, or how would you define your music? Uh, it's just, I mean, what it is, it's basically just light and shade. It's just playing with with music as 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 a kind of a definite form rather than a sound. It's it's like painting or something. It's I don't, I never think of it as we'll do a, a noisy bit here, or we'll do a, a kind of, we'll make this bit beautiful or something. Um, the songs, I mean, the songs actually <coughs> develop as, as moods rather than, I mean, they're, ne they're never structured. We never start with a, a structured song and go and record it. It's, we go into the studio and put down a guitar track and then we build on that guitar track. Um, so it may just be like two chords or something, uh, and in, in that way you kind of you develop something which isn't as structured as you know as, as just verse, chorus, verse, chorus, all over. Um, 
coming back to England. Um, what, is, what, is, what is the music scene like in England at the moment? I mean, all I see is all this, this rave movement, all this these Happy Mondays bands and stuff. I mean, I don't, that's there? not really true. I mean, I, it, it's. Not in England. Not in England. It it's, died a death. About it's the kind of. I mean, there's yeah. def there's two different scenes in England. There's the stuff that gets in the top forty, and the stuff that almost does, which is most of the independent stuff that's around. Um, and the stuff that gets in the top forty at the minute is mainly stuff that gets played in clubs. It's kind of dance music, um, and that owes a lot to the Happy Mondays and. and um, 808 state yeah. bands like that, <coughs> um, but I mean the, the indie scene is kind of. It, I guess there's you've got your noise bands. Um, your, your noise dance crossover bands. Your noise dance crossover bands. Um, your ethereal bands. Um, and your crack bands. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, actually, I don't personally. I don't think it's very exciting yeah. musically in England at the minute. It's become, it's become very unadventurous, um, and it's kind of like everyone's waiting for a, a band like the Birthday Party to suddenly appear. Mm -hmm. You know, like a real band that kind of um, is very different again because that, that that just hasn't happened in England this yeah, year. The Americans just yeah. I mean, at the minute, I think like the, it's far more exciting things are happening in America, like with the bands like Mercury Red and, um, and Nirvana, I suppose. Um, I mean, that's definitely more exciting than what's happening in England. Mm -hmm. What do you think? How will the music scene develop within the next, well, next few months? I, I, I would imagine there'd be like a well in England anyway there'd be a big swing yeah. over to American music mm -hmm. yeah. or to American bass band metally type stuff. I don't know what sort of form, but it yeah it'd definitely be mm. that kind of swing. <laughs> we predict the future. <laughs> but I mean that's good because like it's kind of the English press have been very keen to hype English bands for like two years now since the Manchester thing or mm. three years or whatever. And I, I think they've kind of bled everything slightly dry. I mean, there's, it, I mean, bands don't haven't really had much chance to develop at all because they're, they're being picked up by the press so early on that it's kind of stifling in a way because mm. they don't really develop and they don't really develop their own sound. Um, which is, it's, it, you know, it's a shame. But I'm sure, you know, next year we'll see a kind of a period where bands will actually get a chance to develop a bit more. Yeah. I hope so anyway. Mm. You've got your Happy Mondays as well, haven't you? Not, not your Happy Mondays, your Manic Street Preachers. <laughs> In England. Yeah, we forgot the uh, the punk contingent. <laughs> right too. That's <laughs> left. In the mm. cupboard. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Ah, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Sure. Awesome. And good luck for the gig tonight. Here you go. <laughs> Cheers. Let's see if I can understand some of this.